Hi, my name is Izzy. I live in Austin, Texas. My question for the astronaut is how many countries contributed to the construction of the ISS? Hi, Izzy. Well, it, it certainly uh, is an international partnership, and it's comprised of five space agencies. NASA from the United States, Roscosmos from, the Rus from Russia, uh, JAXA, which is a Japanese space agency, the Canadian Space Agency, and the European Space Agency. And the European Space Agency has 11 member nations, so uh, that's who is part of the International Space Station. My question is, how many people could be at the space station at once? Well, we have bedrooms for six astronauts or cosmonauts on board here. But just like when you have a sleepover, you can pile more people into your house than you have bedrooms for. And we've done that in the past. On my very first mission, when, it, when I came up on a space shuttle, we had seven crew members, and there were already six here, so I was on board for two weeks with 13 astronauts and cosmonauts on board the space station. That was a little crowded, and just recently we had five of us with my friends Bob and Doug uh, arriving from the SpaceX craft, spacecraft, but right now there's only three of us. So we can have a whole host of any, anywhere between three or 13, but most comfortably the number is six. Hi, my name's Kinsley from Indiana. My question is, have you seen meteors from the ISS? You know, we can, and we, and we have. And, and just recently, uh, the NEOWISE, uh, uh, we, we were able to see that uh, about, what, two weeks ago, I, I think? And that was su super cool to see. You could see it with our naked eye, and but with a, uh, a nice camera, you could really bring it into focus. Uh, right at, as the, the, the space station was going on sunrise and sunset. Hi, my name is Lucy and I'm from North Carolina. My question is, what's your favorite piece of research that you've done on the space station? Thanks. Oh, thanks for that question, because that is our primary job up here, is to help contribute to the, the scientific effort and, and, and push the research. And there's lots of cool ones. Our bodies are, are a part of a lot of the studies. We have to give um, blood and urine and, uh, and other types of bodily uh, samples for different types of studies. But one that was, is very hands-on that I did just last week uh, was trying to identify uh, microbial growth on board the space station. We don't want that. And in the past, we've had to take samples and send it to the ground and, and have it analyzed. And months later, we'd find out the answer. With this new experiment I was just working on, we, we, we were um, taking the DNA basically from, from the samples and trying to recognize it and we get an answer within 24 hours on board. And it was really neat for me. I'd never done that level of science with pipettes and, and, uh, and mixing different fluids and, and I, th I thought it was a lot of fun and very practical for us. Hi, I'm Heather and I'm from New Jersey. My question is, what, if any, of the work you're doing on the ISS will help future manned missions? That's a great question because in addition to the scientific research we're doing, we're also doing sort of engineering testbed studies for life beyond low Earth orbit in a spacecraft. And in my opinion, the most important thing is the life support system that we really have uh, got to, we're dialing the, the knobs to a really fine tuning it these days. We recycle about 90% of our water, and that is sweaty t shirts from exercising, drying up, and, and reclaiming that moisture in the air conditioning system, even including when we pee, we go to the bathroom, that urine goes into, into the urine transfer system and it goes through a process and comes out as pure water. This is essential for us uh, taking life outside of low Earth orbit going back to the moon and ultimately on to Mars uh, and, and the reliability factor that we've increased by having these systems on board the space station is really going to set us up for success when we go when you go to Mars. Hi, my name is Nicole and I'm from Oregon. My question is, 
What do astronauts do during their free time in space? Well, that's a good question because we do lots of stuff. But in general, we, I try to do things that I can't do on Earth, like maybe a flip or some kind of uh, crazy motion that you can't necessarily do in your, in your living room. We, uh, but we also have normal things like we can watch a movie, we can read a book, we can uh, play musical instruments if you're so inclined. Uh, but my most favorite thing to do is look out the window and just watch Earth go by because it's so pretty to watch our beautiful planet under, underneath us every, every minute we can. And I'm from Texas, and my question is, how do astronauts exercise in space? Oh, that's a good question, Camilla. We have several different ways to do that. We have a, a, a treadmill, a bicycle, and a weight machine. And the most common question is, a weight machine? That's crazy. There's, you're in weightlessness. How do you have a weight machine? Well, we have this, uh, it's a cylinder, a metal, metal cylinder with a piston rod inside, and we can crank this piston up and down inside the cylinder to squish the air and or release the, the air a little bit, and that gives us different levels of resistance, and that piston is hooked up to a bar, and we can use that bar to, uh, to do different types of exercises depending on how we set it up. The, the treadmill is just like a normal treadmill, however, we need to stay fixed to the floor and we do that with wearing a harness and we take bungee cords and, and uh, go from our hips to the floor of the treadmill and that's what keeps us there. And the bicycle is the same as you would imagine, except there's no seat and there's no handlebars. We just clip our feet into uh, pedals and crank away. And those are our, our primary means of staying, staying fit up here, but more importantly, keeping our bones healthy. Exercise is the number one thing we can do to keep our bones nice and strong uh, while we're here for six months. Hi, my name is Madison and I'm from Texas. My question is, how do astronauts eat food in space? Oh, Madison, that's a question right up my alley because I like to eat a lot and I have some some samples here. This is what I'm going to eat later on today. This is uh, mango salad that I just added water to. It doesn't look too appetizing, but let me tell you, it's pretty tasty. And we have a, a different type of packaging. This is already no water needed. We just can warm it up. We have a little food warmer, and this happens to be tomato basil soup, which is another one of my favorite things to eat up here. And for drinking water, or fluids. Uh, this is is uh, tea. We have this little straw that goes into our beverages, just like a Capri Sun, and uh, we can squeeze out a little bit. And gobble it right up. So it's pretty easy actually to eat in space. My name is Jamie, and I live in New Jersey. My question is, while I do not want to be an astronaut, I'm very interested in working for NASA or SpaceX in a scientific capacity. What area of study would you advise a future college student to pursue in order to increase her chances of having the opportunity to work at one of these organizations? Well, that's a great question, and I'm super excited to hear your enthusiasm for that line of work. Uh, I will tell you that, that uh, aerospace companies, is, just like NASA, have, have opportunities in many, many different fields. So your, your choices is not just limited to, to one thing. I will tell you, though, uh, very specifically, if you're looking to co uh, contribute in a t technical fashion, I would suggest some type of engineering or, or physics uh, math uh, type type of um, of major. I'm a little biased towards that. I have an engineering way of thinking, and uh, it's been very difficult for me to study to learn the Russian language, for example, that that I have to uh, speak w with my my cosmonaut crewmates. Uh, so that part of my brain doesn't work as well as the engineering side of it. But I I uh, I think that if you 
pursue engineering as a course of study, you'll have opportunities uh, that are endless throughout the course of, of your professional life, whether it be an aerospace company or if you choose to venture off into business, the, the critical thinking and problem solving aspect of, the, of your uh, core studies will be beneficial throughout uh, your, your uh, professional life.